Let's look now at how XV6 sets up the first process. So we have a user init, which goes ahead and allocates a procedure. So that's basically allocating a procedure in the procedure table. And then what we go ahead and do first is set up the KVM. So that's setting up the kernel virtual memory mappings. So what setup KVM is going to do is going to set up the kernel virtual memory map. So if you remember that we have the virtual addresses that are starting with a high bit, so 8, all the way up to a small area here, which is for devices. And then this area gets mapped to physical memory. So this gets mapped to physical addresses from zero, just shy of 8000. And then this device area gets mapped up into high area of physical address space. So let's look at how that is working here. So we're mapping from zero up to one megabyte. So that's up through that 640, uh, 640 to one megabyte hole, and we're making that writable. And then go, we go ahead and, and map from where the kernel is linked. So that's that 800100. So that's at one megabyte up. Okay, so basically, first we map this area. And this is read write. And then we're mapping the area of the kernel code. And the kernel code is read only. Okay, so we don't have the right bit set. And then we're going ahead and mapping the from there all the way up to VizTop. And we're making that be writable. And then finally, we map the top device area. And notice that device area is a direct mapping. So we're mapping directly across from uh, these addresses that are right up at the top of the range, so FFF, just lower than FFFF, and they map to that same area, because in physical space, that's where the devices belong. And we can see what setup KVM is doing, right? Basically, what we're going to do is first allocate a page. So this is going to be for the page directory. We're going to initialize it to all zeros. And then we're going to go ahead and make sure that the amount of physical memory we have isn't enough so that the physical memory will interfere with the device area. Okay, so we, are, we only support uh, memory that is slightly less than 2 gigabytes, 2 gigabytes minus this device space. Then what do we do? Then we go ahead and just for each of these entries in this array, go ahead and do a mapping. So we can see that this map pages maps a page directory. Okay. And what else does it do? Well, it takes a virtual address, and then it takes a uh, uh, amount of data to copy, right? So this is the physical end minus the physical start, and then the physical start. The last parameter is the permissions to use. So we'll look at that uh, in a little bit. And then when it's done, it returns the page directory. So that sets up for every process, actually, the kernel virtual mapping, because every process is going to share these four entries, right? Share this same state above 8000, above the current base. It's only below that they're going to be different. So what happens now? We've set up the kernel virtual memory. We're going to set up the uh, user virtual memory, OK? In a moment. So basically, we're going to set that up for the init code. Now, the init code is really odd okay, because the very first process to run is a very, very simple process. We want to make it really simple to, 
simple process. We don't even have an alpha file. Okay, all we have is a single piece of code and it's in fact no more than one page big. In fact, we're gonna have just one page for the process and that's gonna be shared by the code and also by the stack. Okay, so it's gonna be a very, very simple process and all it's gonna do is exec another process. So our exec code, once we see that, actually deals with loading with ELF files. Our very first process doesn't do that. So we just get, think of it as like a, a little uh, boot block for the initialization process. So all it does is have some assembly code that goes ahead and calls exec with on the real C init process. So we will look at init UVM in just a moment, but notice we say that the size of this is just gonna be a single page. We're uh, going ahead and settings the CS register and DS, so all the segment registers. And what's important here is notice we're setting the stack pointer is just gonna be the page size and our instruction pointer is gonna be zero. So our address space for the init process is really just gonna be very simple. We're gonna from zero to 4096 and we're gonna have our code in here and there's not gonna be that much of it. And our stack is gonna be pointing here. So our stack will be growing down. We just know we're simple enough. We're not gonna be using much stack space. There's not much code. We can still fit that all into 4096. So that's what's going on here. And then let's go ahead and take a look at an UVM. So a new UVM is really fairly simple. So we get past the page directory, we get past the initialization code and the size of that initialization code. And what we do is just verify that we in fact don't have more than one page and then go ahead and allocate a page of memory. So kalloc is what's used in the XP6 kernel to allocate a page of memory. And then we go ahead and set it to zeros and then map pages. So this map page is the same map page as we saw before. So we have the page directory. We're gonna be mapping this virtual address zero. How much are we mapping? Page size amount. Where are we mapping it to? That is what physical memory is it starting at? Well, it's whatever this virtual, virtual address is that kalloc returned us. And we're gonna go ahead and convert that to a physical address. What are the permissions we wanna use? Well, we want it to be writable. Well, there, there's code there, that's not, we don't need that to be writable. We definitely need the stack to be writable. So that's why we make that entire page writable and we're just sharing it between code and stack. And we also need it to be uh, accessible in user mode. So then we actually copy over the initialization code into that page. Menu. So what happens when we're actually gonna be doing a context switch, right? So this is the context switch code that says, okay, we wanna go ahead and switch over into the virtual memory of this other process. Okay, so what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna first make sure, okay, we have a process. It has a kernel stack uh, that the, uh, it has a page directory. And then we're gonna go ahead and deal with, uh, we're just dealing with interrupts for a moment. Uh, we're setting some descriptor tables. The important thing to do here is we're gonna go ahead and load CR3. Load CR3 gives us the assembly code that actually will go in and set the CR3 to this. So this is sets it to the page directory of the process. Once we've set the CR3 register, we can actually see the mapping. So what this shows in Kimu is command you can type. So by the way, to get into this uh, command mode of Kimu, it's control A, C, and that'll take you into this little console mode where you can do Kimu commands and control A, C will take you back out. So we've done a control AC, and then we did an info page. So in our version of Kimu, we have added this. Read Regis is we have a, a range of addresses starting at 8000 and going all the way to 803FF. Okay, so these are the page numbers. And these would be the uh, entries with flags, as you can see. So it's been accessed, it's user mode, it's writable, and present. And so this shows the uh, larger structure of this. And then we can look in and see the actual mappings. So we see here the mappings. So, so there's uh, some uh, items alighted here, but 115 to 803 FF is mapped to these physical pages. So 115 to 3 FF. 
So you can see here the fact that on XV6, you can map a physical page number to a virtual page number just by adding uh, an 80 or subtracting an 80. We can see we're writable uh, for this area. Let's look at these. So these ones are mapped for, this is the device IO space. And so this is a direct mapping from those virtual addresses to the physical addresses, physical page numbers here. After we have loaded CR3, we can see that we also have uh, yet one more mapping. So we're doing this mapping from, we see here the address range from 0 to 3FFF, and that is now the pages from 0 to 0, right? So we've basically got a page page descriptor index of zero, a page table index of zero, and this is the mapped physical page. So why this page? That's the page that we k out. So that was just the next available alloc page. And let's just look uh, for at a couple of other routines. So map pages we saw the use of. How does that actually work? Well, what we're going to do, again, page directory, the virtual address, the size, the physical address, and then the permissions. So what we're going to do is go ahead, first off, this virtual address that gets passed in may not be page aligned. And we know that our pages have to be page aligned. So we're going to go ahead and round this down. So we want the page that contains this address. So that's the round down that we'll do here. And so the last page is going to be, we're going to take the virtual address plus the size minus one. And then that's the page that we want to be on. So we'll, the last will be the last inclusive address. And then we'll just go through and what are we going to do? Well, walk page dir, its responsibilities take a page directory, an address, uh, and in this case this parameter says go ahead and create a page table entry if no if there isn't one already, and it will return a pointer to the page table entry. So this will return a pointer to the page table entry for this address given that this is the page directory. And then we'll go ahead and uh, make sure or verify whether there's a page table entry there or not. That is, is it is it valid or not? So if there's already a page table entry set that it's present, that's a problem. So we'll just panic, which kills the kernel. Otherwise, what we'll do is we'll take the permissions okay, that uh, were passed in, we'll add in the pbit to say that it's present, and then we will go ahead and or in the physical address. Since this has been rounded down to a page boundary, we know that the bottom 12 bits are zero. So we can just OR these in. So this updates the page table entry, but we have more page table entries to go. So what we'll do is figure out, did we already get to the last page? If not, if so, we're done. If not, we're gonna go ahead and increment both the uh, address that we are, the virtual address that we're mapping, and also the physical address that we're mapping. How does walk page dir work? So again, walk page dir takes an address, returns the associated page table entry, a pointer to the associated page table entry, uh, and it also has a Boolean which says whether to allocate or not. That is, if, remember this is a two level page table, so if there's no page table at that spot, then if alloc is true, it'll go ahead and allocate it for it. So what are we gonna do? So we'll go ahead and take the page directory bits from the virtual address and then look in our page directory. Okay, and that gives us a page directory entry. Two possibilities of that page directory entry. Either it's there or it's not there, right? So if it is there, then that means there's an associated page table. So then we can go ahead and take the page directory entry, dereference, so this is a pointer to the page directory entry, dereference it pull out the top 20 bits. That's what the PTE address does, is take out those 20 bits. Convert that to a virtual address, right? And we have to convert to a virtual address because remember, we're still using the kernel mapping that exists. So we can't use direct physical addresses. So this now gives us a pointer to the associated page table. And then, assuming we don't do the else part, then we just need to return a pointer to the correct index within that page table. Well, what is the index to use? 
The index is the PTX of the virtual address. We reference that PTE and then we take the address of it because we're trying to allow the caller to modify it. If on the other hand, the P bit was not set, that means there's no associated page table. So we have got to go ahead and assuming that they said they want to alloc, right? If we're not allocating, we're just going to return zero. But if we're not, if we're not at zero, meaning a null pointer, right? So if we are allocating, then we will try and do a K alloc. Again, we've seen that that is a kernel routine that returns us a single page. And we'll go ahead and assign that to the page table. Then we need to zero it out because it could be random at the time we get it back from the allocated. So we want to make sure all of the P bits are not set. Right? so that all of them are invalid. And then we can go ahead and update the page directory entry. Right, So we've got this two level, we've allocated this new page table, we need to update the page directory entry to point to it. So what do we want it to be? Well, we need the page table's physical address, Right, so we go ahead and use V2P on that, and then add in the appropriate uh, permissions. So we know we want it to be present, because that's how we tell whether it's valid or invalid. We're going to go ahead and say it's writable in its user uh, usable in user mode as well. Do we know that necessarily this page table is going to be set that way? No, but the permissions are checked at two levels. Permissions are checked at the page directory level and at the page table level. Uh, and we go ahead and kind of leave them wide open at the page directory level and have them fine-grained at the page table level. So we set them like this and then we return. You may find something like this from XP Physics can be useful when you're doing your JOS code. So feel free to uh, use XV6 as an example of particular types of code. Given the fact, for instance, they're using the same kinds of page tables, this, this can be handy and there are some similarities, especially given it was written by some of the same people.